Hey, welcome back to the season finale of The Office. Oh, no, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> welcome back to our season finale, our last night of Monday Night with Jordan. I'm so happy you've joined us here tonight at the Lighthouse Church of All Nations. I'm your host. First and foremost, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for all of our supporters during this broadcast. I want to thank Pastor Dan and First Lady for all of, you know, just, just these amazing opportunities to allow us to be able to minister to you guys tonight. Tonight, our topic is unlocking the presence of God. And Joey is going to be ministering first, and then Jamari is going to be ministering, and then Jeremiah. And uh, we're just going to, you know, just talk about some things that, that have been on our heart about unlocking the presence of God in our, in our lives. So before I, I say anything else, I want to say, please share, share, share this post. You know, it's an easy way to witness and to allow other people to be able to see this broadcast you know, many people will just end up stumbling upon this and they need to be able to hear something encouraging during this time. Please share it, allow people to see it, like, comment, say something encouraging in the comments for each and every one of us. But, uh, you know, Joey, you're, you're right off, you're first. So how do you unlock the presence of God as a believer? Yeah, so when you came to me with this topic, you know, I had the urge just to kind of share first the benefits that I have seen when you do unlock the presence of the Lord. And the first one is, I feel like it provides such a spiritual confidence and comfort. I know me and you were just talking about this. It's not like a confidence that you get when you're really good at a sport and it's like a cocky confidence. He puts a confidence in you where you have such a boldness and courage, you know, defend his name and, you know, talk about his name and not be nervous to talk about people. You know, when I first got into my faith and people were having a talk about God, I felt like it was, you know, sometimes very easy to not speak my mind or defend the name of God. But when you get the presence of God over your life and you get the Holy Spirit inside of you, you feel such an urge to defend the name of God. Yeah. You know, you get angry when someone's talking bad about God because they don't know the truth yet. Yeah. And when you truly get set free and truly know the truth, you start defending and really feeling the presence. And the comfort, I just feel like you put such a comfort over your life and knowing that the decisions you make, you know, you aren't filled with fear. Yeah. You know, you aren't second guessing the decisions you make. You know, you have such a comfort in just in, uh, not second guessing yourself in any decision. Yeah. And you know, it makes you not yield on your flesh. That's another thing that I've seen in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. It says, when you set your mind on the flesh, it's death. But when you set your mind on the spirit, it's life and peace. Mm -hmm. So when you have God's presence overlooking your life and you have God's presence everywhere around you, it's so easy to not fall for the temptations. It's so easy to not get on the wrong path. But when you don't have the presence, you know, that's when it's very easy to yield to our flesh. And when we yield to our flesh, we're born as sinners. So it's very easy to fall for those temptations. It's very easy to go down the wrong road because you don't have God's presence telling you, hey, you shouldn't do that. You know, we know the road to heaven is narrow. So having God's presence with you, he can keep you on that right path. And the last one I found is, it helps us fulfill our destiny. Before God can use us in our destiny, we need to have his presence. You know, before Saul became king, the presence of God came over and completely transformed him as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit went in that upper room, Peter came out a completely transformed person. Yeah. So we need the presence of God in our lives if we want to be completely transformed. Mm -hmm. You know, really fulfill our destiny that God has for us. You know, now, I guess just getting to know how to unlock the presence of God. I had many things that came to my mind with prayer, being obedient to God, leaning on the word of God, having faith. I mean, the list can go on and on. But the first one I want to talk about is prayer. I know, Jordan, you could attest to this. Right when I got saved, me and Jordan made a rule where, you know, at least once a week, we go to the same place to pray for at least an hour or two. I mean, like get deep in prayer. You know, at first it's so hard. You're like, how can you pray for an hour or two? But that's really when you rely on the Holy Spirit. That's really when you build up your spirit, man, and start speaking in tongues. Because obviously you can't, you don't have two hours of things to pray for. You know, it starts to get hard. But that's really where you learn to speak for tongues for a while. You know, really build up your spirit, man. And, you know, at first it was hard. But now, after doing it every week and every single morning, you know, praying, you know, thanking God. Because it's not the alarm clock that woke you up. It's God that woke you up. That's a quote I live by. Yeah. You know, God gave you another chance at another day. So never be thankful. Never think this is going to be a bad day. He gave you another chance. So, you know, I just feel like building a habit in prayer will keep you accountable. And will just keep the relationship always there. When you're keeping yourself accountable, it's impossible to get away from that relationship because you're always speaking to him. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. God just wants a relationship. It's nothing. It's not confusing. If you have a relationship with God, he'll be there for you and the presence will be over your life. You know, the next thing I wanted to talk about is faith. And in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. You know, said, you said uh, 
look for a Bible story that we think that is good for faith. And I think the one that is perfect is the story of Noah. You know, the story of Noah, I think we all know it. It's when he builds the ark. There was a great global flood. And the thing that was so crazy about Noah is the time that he was in, every man was wicked. You know, everyone described, God described man as wicked, very evil. And God was very upset because everyone was praising the wrong things. You know, God was looking down like, why is no one praising me? Why is no one overlooking my name? And God got so angry, he said, I actually want to wipe out human flesh. I don't want people on this earth anymore, how mad he was. But I think we forget how good God's grace is. You know, how good God's favor is. And look what happened to Noah. God had so much grace in his heart and favor when he looked into Noah's eyes that he decided to keep Noah to be able to save humanity and keep humanity going on. That's why I think when we have God's favor and grace in our life, people underestimate how powerful that really can be. You know, if it wasn't for Noah actually having a relationship with the Lord, who knows what would have happened, you know? And when, ever, when Noah said to people, there's going to be a great global flood, everyone was like, dude, you're insane. Like, there's no way. No one's ever heard of a great global flood. Yeah. No one's ever heard of something that, to that extent. And neither has Noah. Noah put his faith in the Lord and put his understanding on God's character and trusted in the Lord. You know, without Noah's faith in the Lord, who knows if that ark would have got built? Who knows if he, would have, he wouldn't have been saved? Yeah. You know, but him putting his faith in the end, Noah was the only sane one. And everyone else ended up being insane. Yeah. So, you know, just to close this up, I just feel like a lot of us are waiting for a breakthrough in our lives, you know? And we kind of sit around and wait for God to make it happen. If Noah sat around and didn't take the first step, there would have been no ark built. You know, for us to get through that breakthrough in our life, we got to put the faith in God, but take our first steps to get through that breakthrough in our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel like that's something that we really, really need to do to show God that I have faith in you and I really want to take that first step. So whatever it is that you're dreaming of and whatever it is that God's placing in your vision or heart, nothing's too big for God. Yeah. God's dream is always bigger than what we can imagine. So right. just what I can leave you with. Yeah, um, you know, that was just a wonderful word. One thing that, you know, I just, you know, thought about when you're ministering that is, um, you know, a lot of times people, they, they don't commit enough. A lot of times it's like, it's just about yeah. that commitment that really unlocks the presence of God in your life, mm -hmm. you know, like if in anything, you know, I was like, for instance, I'm going to commit 5% of my life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'm only going to see 5% of Jesus yeah. in my life. Yeah. If I were to commit, you know, commit 5% of my, you know, time to try to build my game in basketball, yeah. I really wouldn't see that much change. Mm -hmm. Whatever it may be, you have to look at, you know, really how much you're really putting in if you have no commitment in, you know, in your faith, well, there, well, you know, no wonder nothing is ever changing. But when you really are committed and you live a lifestyle, you know, like mm -hmm. what Joey's talking about, where you live a lifestyle of prayer, you live a lifestyle of reading the word, it's something that you just do, you know, consistently. That's when you're going to see that you're just going to keep on rising and rising and rising. And you're going to move from glory to glory and you're going to excel rapidly in your faith rather than just being stagnant, because how can God move if, if we don't move ourselves? Exactly. exactly. You know, there's just, exact point I there's, really, make, yeah. there's really no way. So, you know, just be committed to whatever, you, you know, whatever you're, you're asking God for, commit to something, whether it be something small, just commit to something, you know, and, and you'll see that that will unlock the presence of God in such a tremendous way, quicker than anything else. Um, we're going to throw it over. To Jamari. Jamari, yeah. how can we unlock the presence of God? Um, uh, really quick. One, I really love the quote that you used when you said, it's not the alarm clock that wakes you up, it's God. That, like, I've, I've honestly, I've never heard that before. And it was just, like, it, it's just the truth, you know? Yeah. And it just, and that just, like, really, it, it kind of touched me, to awesome. be honest. Awesome. But um, I have, like, more so where, like, I have the times where, like, God, he showed his presence, you know, in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started off in Proverbs 3 and 6. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Um, mm -hmm. This talks about how God will leave you on the right. It, it talks about how God will lead you on the right path, but it's up to you if you stay on it. Uh, my coach, when I was uh, playing basketball, my coach, uh, he told me this quote. We well, told the whole team. He said, we will lead you to the water, but it's up to you if you drink it. And it just kind of reminded me, like, God will put you on the right path, but it's up to you if you stay on that path Amen. for him. And um, two weeks ago, my great-grandma had a stroke. Uh, she was in a hospital for one week, and then she had to go to rehab for two more weeks. And, um, 
and she it's it's kind of hard to say but she lost she lost feeling on her left side and she saw double in both of her eyes and like she she couldn't even write her name you know and it was and it was just hard but but god he has brought the strength back to her and this friday she will be released come from, on man yeah. from rehab god. she'll be back at home yes. um and it's and it's just amazing cuz she's been in church all her life you know, she's pray God. Like I'm talking Monday through Sunday, through <laughs> church, church, church. <laughs> Whenever I'm spending the night, we going to church. <laughs> so it's just been 100% church, and uh, it, it, and it just reminds me that God will never leave us. You know, and and it's just like her being so faithful, so faithful to the church. It's just God just showed you know who He really was in that situation. Um, lastly, I really just I want to talk about my uncle and my auntie. Um, they had a car crash in 2016. And they they went like through a brick house, um, and like the the house was destroyed. They had to rebuild the entire house. And the craziest part is there were people in the house, but they were in the basement. So they so they didn't have to go to the hospital. They were perfectly fine. Now my uncle, and my auntie, and um, my little cousin, they they did they were rushed in the hospital. My uncle was rushed to one hospital, and then my auntie and my uh, cousin they were rushed to another hospital. And they had they had broken well. My auntie and my uncle had broken bones, and it was you know, and the people just did not know if they were gonna make it. But the good thing is, no matter how bad the crash was, God brought them and healed both of their bodies. Cause to as it is day right now, they have been married since 2018, and now they have a five bedroom house with three kids. Only doing still wow. still <laughs> going to church. And it's just and it's just amazing. And it made and it honestly it made me think of uh what Pastor Dan preached on last week when he said, um when he preached on Let's Do This, when he talked about, you know, nothing broken, nothing missing. Uh he said like no no Alzheimer's, no no dimensions and stuff, and it just like, and that that could have played a, an effect, but everybody has all their memories, and you know, as of right now, they're still living their best life, and it honestly made me think of Isaiah 40 and 31, and it says, but they will wait upon the Lord, and he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. And it's just, and it, and it's just like that. I feel like that scripture just kind of goes with all the, um, like all everything that has happened in my life and how God has been there. And that's 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 pretty much it for me. Amen. I love it. So, man. Yeah. I love it. Those are those are some amazing testimonies, you know. And I know that, you know, whatever situation anyone is going through, God takes care of his children. God watches over us. And, he'll, you know, healing is the children's bread. So God won't let anyone, you know, who's of him ever go unnoticed or, you know, not seen. He always takes care of his children. And you could see it in these stories that Jamari shared. You know, he always takes care of his children. But uh, we're going to throw it over to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, how can we unlock the presence of God in our lives in a greater way? We can unlock the presence of God, you know. I talked to my mom about this before coming on here, and we brought it down to three points, which is fellowship, preparation, and, and instructions. Um, unlocking the presence of God is fellowshipping with God, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, fellowshipping with God is talking to our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Father talking back to us. And God wants for us to have a relationship with Him, and it's important to have a relationship with Him, like our relationship with our fathers here on earth. Now, when I was a kid, I'd be happy to wake up, you know, all cotton-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know, to fellowship with my father. And my father, you know, would return that same smile to me and, you know, stop whatever he was doing to fellowship with me. But God isn't pleasing. God is unhappy when we, when he wants to spend time in fellowship with us and we aren't ready. Like in Genesis uh, 3 and 9, you know, Eve was being distracted by the devil and her influence over Adam caused him to be distracted as well. And God called out for Adam, Adam, where art thou? And Adam was distracted. God wanted to spend time in fellowship with Adam, but Adam wasn't ready to spend time with God. And, you know, that kind of sounds like us, you know, today. We can get too busy, caught up in the, caught up in the world. Like, I'm, we all do it. We're not, you know what I'm saying? We're not mm -hmm. perfect. We're human. And so, you know, we get too caught up in the world and too busy doing things of the world that we lose sight of God and lose that time with God. So... 
uh, this weekend, you know, my friends asked me to play the game. I'm like, I can't play the game. I need to hear and be in the presence of God, you know. Uh, friends ask me to hang out sometimes. I'm not always quick to say yes because, you know, I need to hear for God, especially if with all the stuff that's going on. Like with social media, yeah. you see bad stuff every mm -hmm. single yeah. day, you know yeah. what I mean? And so it's kind of, we kind of get far away from God when we're tuned in to all the negative things of the world. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, yeah, I just make sure I fast and pray. Like when my mom's making dinner sometimes, I'm like, nah, mom, not, you know what I'm saying? Not today. I'm, I'm fasting. I need to hear from God. You know, which brings me to my second point, preparation. And preparation is entering, you know, the presence of God. First Corinthians 1 and 29 says, no flesh shall glory in his presence. And we shouldn't come in his presence any type of way. Like, for example, like when I'm outside playing basketball, and when you're playing basketball, you know, you build up a sweat and you're dirty, you know, you're stinky. We don't want to come in God's presence dirty and stinky. We have to, you know what I'm saying, wash up naturally and get clean like we do on, in person. We must do the same thing spiritually. Yeah. And so I always make sure, and we can do that by praying. So I always make sure when I pray, um, Father God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Yeah. Uh, thank you for giving me another day in life. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God our provider. Provide me food, clothing, and shelter. Anything that I have done unto you, Father God, please forgive me and wash me clean, creating me a clean heart and renew me a right spirit, uh, you know, in Jesus' name. And then on top of that, it's like once we're clean, we get a new feeling. Then we can actually get to hear from God because God wants to speak to us. Mm -hmm. We just have to be ready to speak to him, like I said. And then which leads into my third point, instructions. You know, when God calls you, he always gives you an instructor. You know, to follow their, and we must follow their instructions to, in order to be in the presence of God. You know, we have youth leaders, pastors, mentors, uh, you know, mothers and fathers. You know, God has assigned those people in our lives to mentor us and to, and to give us instructions to push us towards God and unlocking the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And when I was five years old, my mom started teaching me how to pray and how to hear the voice of God. And, you know, God was giving me dreams and visions like Samuel. And Samuel had an instructor as well. You know, Samuel's instructor was Eli. When, when God kept calling Samuel, he called him two times and he kept running. To, Samuel kept running to Eli, you know, like, what am I to do? And Eli said, well, this is God talking to you. So when God calls you again, go back and say, here I am, God. And mm -hmm. that's what he did. And what followed that was instructions. And so um, in 1 Samuel, you know, 3 and 8, 3, 8 through 10, which states that. But he also says in verse 2, behold, I will do new things in Israel. And I prophesy that God will do new things in our house, in our school, mm -hmm. in our family, in our life, in our church, in our finances. Anything that we need, like, we can pray for and we can ask for in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And this all starts by following these steps. And so, um, yeah, that's what unlocking the presence of God is to me. You know, being willing to talk to God and preparing and being clean in, to, in God so we can talk to God. And then just following his instructions. Like, after I'm done praying and speaking in tongues, you know, my mom tells me, get out a pen and get out a paper and hear what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Because it might not be too, it might be all too much at once. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we have to write down those downloads and instructions that God has given us in order to unlock his presence and to go forth in what he wants us to do. I love it. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. I love it. Do you have anything from that, Joe? I mean, no. I mean, I just feel like it's, you know, it's really important is to listen to God and keep in tune with God, not right. listen to other people because the presence of God that you're under is so much different than other people. Exactly. You know, the yeah. visions he's giving you is not the visions he's giving other people. The dreams he's giving you is different than what he's giving other people. So if you put your faith in the Lord, then he'll provide for you. Exactly. Just yeah. stay in tune with God. So that was amazing. Yeah. I like that, um, that, that preparation aspect and like, just like the way that you posture your heart towards God when you go and, you know, you go and speak to him and you go and do things. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes, you know, I feel like, it's just people will go to God like he's an on-demand button where it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, God, yeah. you know, I'm going to come to you and throw all these things that are going on in my life. But then you, you never talk to God once in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you only come to God when you want to, you know, throw all these random things on him. Like, mm -hmm. okay, God, why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? Why isn't this happening? And it's like, you know, God's not your on-demand button. Now, mm -hmm. of course, when you have a relationship with someone, you know, it's different. Like if I have a relationship with, you know, Joey, I know that I can go and talk to Joey and Joey would be like, okay, you know, like I'm willing to, you know, help mm -hmm. you out here. But if right. me and Joey didn't have any relationship and I came to Joey and I said, Joey, I need you to help me with this. You know, I mean, you know, your answer would probably be like, dude, I've never even talked to you. I really don't know you. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. yeah. I don't really know you like that. Like, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all about that relationship, you know, having that, that relationship being postured and the right heart, right mind, 
a way that you'll be able to go and talk to God like nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and those are really some key ways that you can unlock the presence of God in your life. The other thing that I want to say that, you know, if you have yet to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that is a way that, I mean, you will really see a greater depth of the presence of God in your life. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, I want to pray for anyone who's yet to receive it because I believe that it is something that will, I mean, it will it will take your faith to a whole new level. You know, in the Bible, in 100%. Acts, it talks about when they received the Holy Ghost, they had a power came upon them, and then that's when they were able to become witnesses into mm-hmm. all the different places that God wanted them to go. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until then that they were able to really be able to do what, you know, the mission of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But when they waited and that power came on them, that's when the gospel spread like, you know, wildfire. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I just know for myself that my, even my own life, you know, receiving the Holy Spirit has been something that is, I mean, it's no words can explain it. So right now, if you have yet to receive it, it is very simple. Uh, a lot of people, they, they overthink it. They, they think it's, something, you know, crazy, and they don't, they don't, you know, it's, it's as simple as just allowing the Lord to give you your heavenly language, and that he can direct you and lead you the way that he wants to, so you just got to be open to it, and just be open to it, and allow the Lord to be able to fill you with his presence right now, Mm -hmm. so right now I'm going to pray, and I want you guys just to pray in the spirit too, and, you know, point your, you know, point your hands to the camera as we pray right now, so right now, if you have yet to receive the Holy Spirit, just, just raise your hands in the air. You're going to start to feel an anointing. You're going to start to feel a, a presence of God that you, you've never really felt. There's going to be a river of flowing water that's going to stir up in you. And you just have to open your mouth and just start speaking. You're going to feel it right in your stomach and it's just going to come out like in a way that, you know, your, your tongue's just going to start flowing. Just say, I receive it right now, Lord. I receive your promise right now in the name of Jesus. Yabasho. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Rabashata. Comment right now if you receive the Holy Spirit. And if there's anything that you have a specific prayer request for, I'm going to go back and pray for it. I'm going to lead you through it. But right now, we're all good, guys. We're all good, guys. Come on. <laughs> if anyone has yet to receive Jesus Christ, though, you know, we do salvation prayers all the time, and it is just simply about just giving it to God, just giving your life to God, and making that commitment, just like we were talking about, devoting that time, devoting that, you know, whatever you have that you can just give right now to God, just open up and allow Him to come into your life. So I'm going to pray right now. Just repeat after me, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. I'm willing to turn away from my sins. I'm willing to turn away from my sins. And follow you all the days of my life. And follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm so happy that you joined us here for our last night of the office. <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm so thankful that Pastor Dan and First Lady and the Lighthouse Church of All Nations and all the supporters during this entire month. It's been a blessing. It's been an honor. It's awesome to be able to serve Jesus. I got, you know, the dream team here tonight and yes, sir. everyone everyone did great. Show some show some love in the comments, but you know, this concludes our night, our final night of Monday nights with Jordan. I'm so happy that you joined us and just have a great evening. See you.